Hello and a wonderful good afternoon from Bavaria in Germany. Academy time. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> People, welcome to another wonderful session. And today's session is actually the most favorite one. It's about gaming. Yes, gaming. It's carnival time. And uh, today is the mold bowl issue of our academy. I was looking forward to this one, especially. We have great prices. And great cases. So people, this uh, time, um, this afternoon, you will see selected cases by two of the most passionate demoscopists that we know. And I'm convinced, stay with us, and you will get wellness for your dermoscopic eyes. That's what we can promise. And for your brain. <laughs> true, true. We train your eyes and your brain. People, today with us, we have two wonderful guests, okay? Do we start in Athens or in Poznan? In Athens, it's uh, more heat in, in it, Greece. There is more sun. There is more sun <laughs> in Athens. More sun That's in what Athens. we need. Uh, we have from Athens, Konstantinos Liopiris. Welcome, Konstantinos. We are hello, very hello, happy everyone. to have you here. <laughs> Konstantinos, welcome. Thanks for your time this afternoon. Everybody knows you already because you are very passionate demoscopy, teaching a lot, coming from some years Sloan Kettering in the United States, now back to Athens uh, at Seagrass Hospital. And uh, yeah, welcome Come. to the Book of Finder Mulbone. Well, it's always a pleasure and an honor to be among you. Catherine, your Greek has improved tremendously. You said my, my last name perfectly, Lopiris. Exactly. Pretty <laughs> tough. <laughs> like in the US, they would always pronounce me Leopiris. Or, yeah, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense. But yeah, it's Lopiris. Well, I love Greece, by the way. Do you okay. have a cappuccino freddo with you or a cafe? What's the I philosophy? Have, I have a freddo espresso, and espresso. right now outside it's 26 Celsius. Huh. Oh, let's that's go. Not, that. That's not fair, seriously. It's not fair. Yeah, I know. I know. So we go from the sun to the snow. Yes, <laughs> uh, but I, thought, I think even in Poland, uh, the winter is not as we are used to. We have got with us Pavel Pietkiewicz, and I, I'm sure I pronounced it well. Pavel, you tell me. Pavel, Hello. another Hello, incredible Mama. dermoscopist. Pavel, Hello, how are you? I'm fine. It's uh, indeed uh, snowing in Poznan today, <laughs> so we have a uh, first uh, colder day in weeks. And uh, the streets are paralyzed with uh, farmers and snow. So it's great to stay at home and... Uh, play uh, mobile. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Pavel, thanks for your time. I have to be um, honest, looking back, both Konstantinos and Pavel have a huge contribution to uh, what we uh, have as a development of our tools. Not only hardware, I'm talking about the, the software tools, the artificial intelligence tools, uh, people who spend time with thermoscopy beyond working out. This is what I can say, Konstantinos and Pavel, they share this passion. And this time that you spend beyond that, so evenings, playing games, spending time in the happy hour, all of this is a direct and indirect contribution to knowledge, not only for many dermatologists, but also us as manufacturers. And I have to be honest, I appreciate this. We appreciate this as photo finder. And today having you with us with your favorite cases, is, in my opinion, the best possible option that we can offer to all the audience. Okay, So people, you have to stay tuned and excited. 20 cases, 10 selected by Konstantinos, 10 selected by Pavel. And are we talking about easy or difficult cases, gentlemen? Be honest. It's gradient. So we start from easier and we move upwards. I mean, there are great prices on the stake here. But as a disclaimer, if you allow me, yes, both Pavel and me are very passionate about dermoscopy, but Moha, your passion actually may surpass ours. <laughs> like, guys, Moha is such a great dermoscopist. Like, literally, <laughs> he's so good. It's impressive. After all these years participating in your lectures, you, <laughs> I cannot do anything to learn, you know? But uh, no, uh, seriously, it's it's something that the IDS is just uh, a group of people who is infecting others with this virus of thermoscopy. You just 
fall in love with it and you can never let go. I had this conversation with Ahmed Sadek and he told me the first time he met Argenciano and what it did to his brain when he watched the lecture of thermoscopy. This is ongoing, ongoing worldwide and it's growing and growing. And I believe this is what we live from, okay? This passion that the ideas the members are creating. You both are ideas board members, you both have a contribution and you're both involved in the preparation, I think, of the World Congress in Argentina, which is one of our prizes today. We give you a ticket to that Congress. OK, the uh, subscription, the badge is paid by PhotoFinder for you. This is one of the prizes that you can win. We have also the online um, subscription and ticket to the digital training, an incredible demoscopy course by Jose Bargenciano and Emilio Slalas. So we have interesting awards, good awards. That's why you should concentrate well. Yeah, the game. all awards are more education, let's say. Yeah. It's all about education, but the mm -hmm. one with the ticket to Argentina, in my opinion, is, goes beyond that because um, Argentina in springtime, guys, October, end of October, imagine a country that is rich, beautiful, the people rich full of passion. Rich in rich sense. Rich, no, rich, in, rich in, in sense of food, in sense of nice people, in sense of beautiful sights. Whether everything is a perfect country. The only thing missing in Argentina is good politicians, but the rest is perfect. Beautiful country. And, and also, it is the birthplace of Maradona, who is the have birthplace of Diego Armando Maradona, as you say. People, people, the World Congress for the first time in South America, the ideas, the best thermoscopists will meet in one spot. And imagine, imagine the power of thermoscopy, the passion, the inspiration in combination with the beauty of Argentina, Buenos Aires, in Primavera, in springtime. You cannot miss this, okay? So get yourself focused and ready. You gotta be not only good in detecting the lesion, you gotta be fast. This is the, the rules of Kahoot. Constantinos, maybe you tell us a little bit about Kahoot and how people can win Kahoot games. I mean, you, you have been organizing so many of them in happy hour. So Kahoot's a very nice, uh... I actually found it out in, in while well in the US. It's an Israeli company, I think. <laughs> the, the, the nice thing about Kahoot is that it has brought gamification in another level because it allows everyone to participate. It's very democratic. Mm -hmm. However, it's not always about the best demoscopy. You have to be good at the game. You have to be fast and you have to be efficient. Uh, it's it's a very interesting concept how people how people that are extremely good at dermoscopy, may not perform well. Have you ever seen Zeppi, Emilios, myself, or a Pavel win any of the Kahoot? No, because we're not good at gaming. Like, it, ah. it takes a special skill to, to get there. But oh, those Pavel, are good. Is. <laughs> Pavel is a, good, he's a gamer, by the way. He's a gamer. Oh, yeah. Randall Santinos, you... Uh... <laughs> Uh, I, now I have to, to, to take part in uh, your happy hour. <laughs> you motivated me. <laughs> by all means. By all he means. was winning all AI challenges with where he was taking part. And, <laughs> and he was fast and uh, accurate. And, yeah. I, I think the, the main problem with good dermatoscopies is that uh, 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 if, you, if you want to be fast and good, you need to use uh, uh, pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. So you need to to watch and watch watch uh, on and on uh, cases uh, all days long uh, mm -hmm. to 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 uh, increase efficiency. But uh, if you don't, and if you use slow dermatoscopy that I prefer, uh, then you need some more time to understand what you are seeing and what are the uh, pathology dermatoscopy correlates. Yeah. No, this exactly. is, this is it. It's nice, slow dermatoscopy. And, and, and all in all, it, when you work in patient with a patient, it's it's the final diagnosis that counts, not the the fast pace. Yeah. True. Exactly. True. People, let me explain the rules. So maybe we... just say everybody gets ready already with a digital device to uh, to play. Exactly. Just that was with... that is one yeah. of the first rule of the game. Sure. Yeah. You have to have a mobile phone or. Uh, Basically, yeah, you need your mobile phone, yes. um, a smartphone, so that you can participate in this game. And it's not very difficult. Let me share my screen with you because we're going to guide you through this. OK, so mm -hmm. look at uh, this screen. So I would start now the uh, dermoscopy 
mobile ball. So as you said, this is the Kahoot game, which now is being set. And uh, when we start, we start the classic mode through, my dear friends. Okay. Now, you will be able to uh, join as the pin is going to be prepared. So please go to Kahoot. Dot, uh, it or or a, a scan this QR code, and then you will be able to add the. But guys, choose a very very good and creative name. Be good with your nicknames. This could uh, increase your chance of winning something. <laughs> be creative with your nickname. For example, there are beautiful names out there. For example, Michael Jackson, Diego Maradona. You have got nice uh, nicknames out there. Okay. Be creative. Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald. <laughs> He's definitely not good in that Moscow. Is that what you want? <laughs> okay. So, people. Terminator. <laughs> Terminator is good. Already, I mean, Terminator I mean... is already, already one of my favorites. <laughs> Very good. Oh, the yeah. eye. Oh, my God. The eye. That's too much Game of Thrones that you have watched. Or, uh... It's not very ominous. Oh, no. It's uh, Lord of the Rings. The Eye. Lord of the Rings, The Eye. Yeah, you're right. It's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> People. <laughs> so. Um, Nutella. Riga, this must be someone. Yeah. We Dr. Diamonds. <laughs> Nutella. Nutella is good. Nutella is wonderful. <laughs> I bet it's Italian. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So. People, please jump in. Jump in. We give you another like, um, 10, 20 seconds. Please. Um, how are we in the chat? Are people um, getting in? Is there any technical issue out there or is it all fine? Good. Because we have uh, good 115 in the audience and 62 playing. Maybe some of you just want to watch. People, uh, you have the chance. I mean, okay, if you don't have an, a smartphone or uh, available, etc., well, it makes it a bit difficult, but Please uh, participate, participate, uh, because uh, the more we are, the more exciting it's going to get. But, but people, you know that a lot of uh, um, audience is watching this show uh, in the weekend because of time zone issues. I guarantee learning effect the same because we will deal with every case. Konstantinos and Pavel will, will share their experiences about uh, the diagnosis of every case and the challenge of it. So um, even not participating, we make sure that you take a lot of learnings out of this event, okay? This is guaranteed. Uh, but participating increases your chance of the ticket to Argentina or the digital training platform, which is both wonderful. Yeah. We are at 70, 71. Should we start? And, and just one thing, uh, we will always show the clinical image and then we will show the demoscopic image, then the questions. Well, exactly. This is the, this is the idea to yeah. go mm, uh, to to look at the case clinically, then dermoscopically. Then you get ten seconds. People, you have ten seconds, multiple choice to make up your mind, uh, and then you gotta be fast and of course going for the right choice. This is it. And after the yeah, after we have the, done the uh, question, we will come back to the dermoscopic image to explain exactly why this is this. Diagnosis, right. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay, we are in, we are close to 80. Well, that's, we go backwards at the moment. I think that's, that's, uh, should we start? Yes, if we start, all, all people will appear. Good. So, senoras, senores, uh, a new game for winning a ticket. Hey. Photo finder, um, Academy Mall Bowl. By the way, uh, soon we have got the Super Bowl here. So uh, stay tuned. And here are the prices again. Yeah. Guys, we talk about World Congress, Argentina, and of course the digital training with the two grand masters of their Moscow. <laughs> so our first clinical case. Who is going to take comment on this? Pavel or uh, Konstantinos? Where does this case come from? It's Constantino's so this, case. This is my case. Uh, we're talking about a 43-year-old female patient presenting with a nodular lesion of the palm, has been there for three months, and reportedly, per patient, growing in size. You can see, even if I think that this is an easy first case 
for people to get accustomed. Mm -hmm. Even in the clinical, I think that people can guess the diagnosis. There are clues in the clinical which will be examinated during the dermoscopy. If we can go to the next slide. And this is the dermoscopy. Okay, this is the dermoscopy. So people, get yourself focused. You see the clues, the chaos, whatever you need to know. And we will start the multiple quiz. What's your diagnosis, everybody? Looks like pizza margarita. <laughs> is it nodular melanoma? Oh, people are very fast. A pyogenic granuloma or a basal cell carcinoma? Ooh, wow. And Wow, wow. What do we say about this one? So it's totally understandable that people, because of the location, may think of a necrine paroma. However, let's see who is leading. Sevjik is leading. Then we have pink, then J, then RM, and then Dermalex. Dermalex. Let's, let's go back to the lesion, because uh, maybe you can comment it. Why, why uh, so, so many people went for the wrong answer? Exactly. So, yes, there is a plurality of vessels. However, the main clue here is in the periphery. You can see the ring that is created around the pyogen granuloma. And this is why I, I focus your attention on the clinical, because you can see the ring even clearer on the, on the clinical image. And this is the one that leads us towards the pyogen granuloma, getting a history from the patient. There was a history of trauma there. And subsequently, this pyogenic granuloma was created. Pavel, that was the truth, Konstantinos? I would be wholehearted, wholeheartedly with with people voting for a, a, a cream poroma. Really? Because this this uh, this colorant is not very specific, so it can uh, accompany any uh, fast growing tumor that uh, that is occasionally bleeding. And here, the vessels are mostly, I think, glomerular, maybe or looped. Mainly glomerular. Glomer yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, it is a very. It, it good was a difficult that. case. So right. if it if it was an easy one, so I I am really afraid of. <laughs> no <one laughs> on. Yeah. Your definition, your definition of simpleness. Uh, I mean, maybe we have to discuss this again <laughs> the together. The warm up case. Yeah. Let's. <laughs> I need to revisit my definitions. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, let's go to the next one. Here okay, we so... have a clinical picture. Other. This one is mine, so don't be afraid. This this is the easy one. Mm -hmm. So you you can see a a, a forearm of of a, a seventy year old woman uh, who presented with a solitary pigmented uh, lesion uh, uh, standing out uh, that was uh, present for some years. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see how it looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, yeah. pay attention. And pay let's attention. vote. And let's vote for it. Now, next time, let, let's, let's see. Let's see uh, this time. Is it malignant melanocytic, malignant keratinocytic, benign melanocytic, or benign keratinocytic? I expect more than malignant one. Yes, one. of course. Bravo, bravo. The Probably. absolute majority went for the correct answer. Yeah. Like that. Like that. Let's see uh, who is still in front. Oh, Sevjik uh, is doing so well. The leader, the leader stays. Very good. Very good. Guys, let me let me make a point here because uh, actually I took this case and run it through our AI. And even here, we have got a very high confidence on uh, malignancy in the red area, as you see. And we have a new classifier, which we actually have at the moment not yet even launched, but it shows also that the lesion is highly melanocytic. So two classifiers. The, one, for the first one shows if the lesion is rather malignant, and the second one shows if it is melanocytic or non-melanocytic. I think this combination gives a lot more clue to the user that is not maybe an expert thermoscopist, but just a physician, than just uh, telling what if the lesion is benign or malignant. What do you think, Baba? Yeah, I think it will. It 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 has uh, the the potency to give priority to to patients with uh, suspicious uh, with uh, with lesions uh, suspected of malignancy that mm -hmm. are melanocytic, because uh, sometimes uh, it's hard to tell if if we are dealing with a BCC, especially in in uh, the darker skin types, uh, or or uh, with a melanoma. True. So True. this no. will help a lot, and maybe this will save some lives. 
that's what we want. That's the reason why we are doing this job. Yeah, yeah. but it was it was uh, it really uh, uh, somehow uh, attracted my attention the case. That's why I run through the the AI. So let's move on with uh, oh some clues. Some clues. Yes. Tell us. So wow. first of all, uh, I I uh, wish to tell why it's melanocytic. First of all, you, you uh, there are uh, uh, brown lines uh, reticular, pigmented lines reticular. And there are clots, and this combination is uh, is uh, typical for melanocytic lesions, clots or dots, uh, especially if they are peripheral uh, or they form pseudopods, because uh, uh, pigmented lines reticular can be present also in non-melanocytic lesions like uh, dermatofibromas, like uh, solar lentigles, like uh, seborrheic keratosis, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they are never together with the clots. Correct. So we know it's melanocytic. And now why it's malignant? First of all, chaos is the strongest clue to malignancy. And uh, uh, with the highest uh, uh, agreement among uh, raters. And we have a chaos of colors, chaos of structures, and chaos of demarcation. And secondly, we have multiple clues to malignancy. We have gray color. That means that the melanin is uh, beyond dermal epidermal junction. So it's it's already invasive. Uh, we have thick lines reticular. So this is uh, number three, uh, where the holes are smaller than the width of the network mm -hmm. or equal in size. Uh, we have also a geometric border. And uh, this is not natural for, for benign lesions to follow uh, straight lines. So if something li uh, looks like a piece of art, it's not benign. Uh, we have also angulated lines. This is number five. They are not so much visible, but we have also a pigmented circle uh, uh, that uh, encircles and closes the hair follicle and some black dots. Uh, that are the clue to upward migration of melanin. We have finally uh, number six, and these are perifollicular linear projections that were recently reported by Christian Navarrete and the team that correspond to caput medusa structure seen with uh, reflectance confocal microscopy. And I think that we should call them short radial lines converging to a circle if we use uh, pattern analysis. Mm. And finally, we have also segmentally uneven border. Uh, this is number seven. So yeah. multiple clues uh, pointing out to the diagnosis of invasive melanoma, microinvasive indeed. And there you used optical super high magnification, right? No, it's just uh, cut out square and magnified. <laughs> Like the almost the yeah, but but in fact, the higher magnification like... gives us interesting clues. Yeah. Very, very well done, Pavel. I mean, this is an incredible description of the case. Yes. And, and this is what we call a warm up, Constantinos. This is the warm, warm up. up. <laughs> Looks ugly, it's ugly. <laughs> okay, people. Next case. Now I'm excited, Constantinos. Tell us. So, a 54 year old male sent to us for evaluation of lesion on the thinner history of two years. Before moving to the dermoscopy, I would like you. Can you zoom in? Zoom in. Click. If you click. Yeah. So, I would like you to notice the entirety of the hand. So, yes, there's that lesion on the thinner, but there are some other clues as well. There. So let's move on to the dermoscopy. And this is the dermoscopy. Not extremely informative, apart from the color, but I mean, it's not very distinctive for something, is it? I, it's not black, it's not brown, it's not very bluish, some kind of bluish. And let's see the questions. The eye of something. Hmm. Is this a blue nevus? Is this a melanoma? Is this exogenous pigmentation? Or is it something else? It must be a tricky case. No, it, most people got it correctly. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm so glad. Wow. 
I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised because I thought the majority goes for maybe blue one. Blue one, I thought also. Yeah, but it, it was kind of greenish. And if we move on to, well, first of all, let's see who is leading. Yeah. Sevjik is still on top. Malik's very close. Lenchik, Iti, and Nutella. Nutella is climbing. Yeah. Uh, Nutella, welcome, welcome Nutella, wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, clinical. So, on the clinical, please zoom in. Mm -hmm. So, tell us, tell us about the clinical case. Yes, but if you can zoom in, so click, click, click on the hand. So, if you can notice, yes, of course, there is this lesion in the center, but if you if you look at the index finger, index, so there, exactly there, at the tip of the hand. There are some more of the similar greenish pigmentation. So this patient uh, is a jewelry maker, and he uses different kind of uh, artificial uh, pigmentations that during the process were inserted into his hands. Wow. Of course, there was they were they they sent the, they sent the patient for this lesion to exclude melanoma. But I mean, it's not brown, it's not black, and he has. Two other spots that are exactly the same on the tip of the index finger. So these are the clues to exclude anything malignant. So, so what was good. the composition of the alloy? I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> was it a, was it copper? Was I, it I so the patient didn't know he, because he uses so many. I I have performed a biopsy and I'm waiting for it, for the result, but I don't think it will be very informative either way. <laughs> it will just ground up the tissue around a foreign uh, object. Bravo, bravo, people! We have already three cases. Let's go to number four. Oh, nail case. Number, number four is mine, mm -hmm. and this is a finger, uh, a single uh, uh, finger with uh, uh, pigmentation uh, that belongs to a ten-year-old boy. Uh, the lesion appeared uh, about four years ago, reportedly after a trauma. So, what could it be? Have a look at these images. And Everybody stay a voting focused. panel. So it's 10 year, 10 year old? How, how 10 year old. 10 year old. 10 year old. Wonderful. Is it acquired nevis? Melanoma, melanosis, or pigmented SCC. <laughs> One. Oh. The majority. Almost, Very almost half. Yeah, yeah, almost. But the majority voted for acquired nevus. And only five people voted for melanoma. Oh, that's a surprise for me. Really? Okay, yeah. Because there are multiple clues to this diagnosis. It's Hutchinson sign, right? Whoa! Oh, have a so, uh, what happened? Either. What a time. shuffle! This nail case reshuffled the entire <laughs> scoreboard. <laughs> welcome, no welcome, uh, E.T. No welcome. more Nutella. <laughs> my God, Asemjik lost it completely. Oh my God! We miss you, no. Nutella. Please come back to us. <laughs> so, Pavel, tell us, tell us exactly what was the trick here. Okay, so <laughs> there were multiple clues to the malignant nature. Uh, 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 of this lesion. So I wonder why uh, uh, many people voted for melanosis. Because we have a broadband that affects almost the whole nail plate. We have non-uniform bands in regard to colors because we have tan, we have uh, light, uh, uh, we have darker uh, uh, brown, we have some black dots even at the periphery uh, to shape because some uh, lines are wider than other, uh, some are triangular, and uh, this triangular shape is a clue to growth. Uh, it points towards the, the, the free edge. If you compare the width uh, at the proximal nail fold and the, at the uh, distal edge, uh, it's much wider uh, proximally. Uh, we also have a crumbling. We have crumbling of a free edge. Can you see number four? So this mm -hmm. is another clue uh, that the structure uh, of a nail is affected. And finally, we have a positive Hutchinson sign with these black dots and uh, lines uh, spreading 
to the proximal nail fold. But the key uh, uh, factor, the game changer here, is the age of a patient. So even if this lesion looks somewhat uh, malignant, there is no possibility of developing subangual melanoma in a child. So if it's a 10-year-old boy, it was an evis and it always be an evis. Totally agreed. And I mean, it was really nice that the vast majority of people bought into towards a benign lesion and wouldn't biopsy yeah. at that. Yeah, but the lesion is brown. In melanosis, it would be gray and, and the lines would not be so evident. It, they will be somewhat blurred mm -hmm. and that we would not have a uh, uh, Hutchinson sign. Okay, uh, but uh, still five people voted for melanoma. Yeah. Again, we have to say 10 year old boy, the possibility of a nail melanoma on a 10 year old boy is what? Zero. Is uh, rather you win in lottery, right? Zero. Yeah. Zero. yeah. It's absolutely zero. Okay. <laughs> Good. No, <laughs> no case no. ever reported. Yeah, yeah, this is this is what I say. Good. Next case, Constantinos. Now I'm really excited to hear about this one. Okay, this is a tricky one. If I you say that. that. Yes, I do. I do say that. It, I, I admit it. It's a tricky one. Because you can see this plague um, arising next to a surgical scar. I can help you by saying that the patient has no history of cancer. However, there is something developing right next to the surgical scar, an excision of a similar, well, I mean, now I'm helping too much. I'm helping too much, but that's okay. It's, it's different, so I'm allowed. Patient excised a similar lesion uh, two years ago, and I would like to also point your attention. Moha, if you can point to the upper right back, so upper, right, 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 a little bit more down there. So Here? Uh, yes, so the lesion above the, the, the mouse, there, there, exactly, exactly. So patient had also one other lesion over there, which was similar to this one. So if we can move to the endoscopy, This is the lesion. Serous. You can see the serous sanguinous uh, exudate. And, of course, there is a concerning feature along with fiber signs. But focus on the color and the exudate. Okay, everybody, get your fingers ready. What's your diagnosis? Be fast, 10 seconds. Is this eczema, is this melanoma, is this basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma? Ooh, my God. We always have two, two groups, all right? Yes, very split. Very split. But marginally, the majority found it correctly. I didn't help enough, obviously, <laughs> but moving forward. So the patient had presented with a similar... Oh, let's see the... Lenchik. Oh, Sevcik is back. Sevcik is back. So yeah, we have got Sevcik and Dermalex back in the... is growing up. <laughs> but yeah, but come forward. on. Guys, Lenchik has got now quite an spare. I mean, there's uh, up front. I mean, there is there is no pressure on Lenchik so far. Is um... We still have a lot of cases. Like anyone oh, yes. can oh, yes. Anyone can see. We have a lot. But Constantino, tell us about this uh, case of eczema. So, so the interesting thing about this case is that the patient had a surgery performed there, not a biopsy, because he had a similarly looking region, a lesion, a very typical lesion, and biopsy came back as dermatitis. Okay, eczema. And he right. developed in the same spot another plague and had two extra plagues like that. I performed a biopsy, obviously, because of the shiny white lines, which are quite concerning. Mm -hmm. But the orange color, along with the sort of sanguinous crust and the fiber side, which is caused due to the sort of sanguinous exudate, this is what leads us towards diagnosis. 
Mm -hmm. Constantinos, uh, generally I see uh, in, in several talks the, the dermoscopic comparison of eczema and also psoriasis. So there is, there are, uh, at, at the level of capillars, there is a, a clear cut differentiation between the dermoscopic image of psoriasis and eczema, right? Shape of capillars. Yes, absolutely. So if, if it was a psoriasis, we would expect to see way more um, uh, vessels, and they're mainly dotted and uh, glomerular because of the dialect capillaries, exactly as Moha is describing. Here, only the exudate is the only demoscopic feature in essence, and the orange color. What's the cause of the white lines here? Most likely trauma. So the patient was itchy and scratching it. Very good case, very good case. Oh. Pablo. Nice. Uh, here I present you a, 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 a abdominal lesion, a papular eruption that is new. Uh, I think it developed a few days before the, the patient's visit, uh, and it was in a young woman. And my question uh, to you would be what it is. Can we have a dermatoscopy? Mm, interesting. Hey everybody! So uh, th th that's 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 a very very suspicious. Here, dermatoscopy also. needs to be read in context. Also, Pavel, <laughs> yeah. has the patient applied any cream? No. Okay. Oh, interesting hint, everybody! Interesting hint. Get your fingers ready. Yeah. <laughs> Ten seconds. Bed bug bites, viral warts, lichen planus, or flea bites. <laughs> oh, I tricked you. <laughs> oh, so majority I... voted for bed bug bites. Yes, I think this is the strongest differential, and I will tell you why it's not correct. But before you tell us this, let us look at this disaster that you created. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh Len Lengic so remains. Oh my God. Guys, yeah. Lengic so is. People is who are meant to win. <laughs> no, no, but uh, that was interesting. We have got two newcomers, RN and Solia. Yes. So tell us your clues. Fine. So uh, the first clue is linear distribution. So it could be suggestive of uh, a Kebner uh, phenomenon. But it's not a word, for sure, because we don't have a typical vessels. We have no white lines of lichen planus. Uh, so it's mostly between bed bugs and fleas. Uh, you can see with number one, this small pinpoint purpura uh, at the center of, of the papules. And these can be present in both, because uh, if uh, an insect bites you, then there is this, this reaction. However, uh, the inflammation here is quite mild. While in uh, bed bug bites, you should have a larger lesion uh, that resembles a wheel. Mm. So the, the size is quite small, as you can see. And the linear distribution is because uh, the pet, who is a vector, uh, of the fleas, because a pet was kept on the owner's uh, knees, and the only accessible part of the body for a flea was the one above the waist. Usually, flea bites uh, uh, occur above the sock line uh, on the ankles, but here, this was the only accessible uh, uh, part for, for, for the insect. Mm. So flea bites are much smaller. Interesting. One, Interesting. The reason why I asked Pavel if the patient has applied any cream based on clinical, my differential was uh, apart from from uh, insect bites was lichen striatus, and when when applying corticosteroids, the um, the white lines may subside. This is why I asked if he has applied any corticosteroids. But since there were not. We exclude immediately the, the leaking part. 
Very interesting. Good. Very interesting mm-hmm. case, which created definitely a kind of an earthquake in the scoreboard. <laughs> but uh, let's see if it gets any so simpler, uh, Mr. Expect Gossard. the unexpected. <laughs> but uh, but uh, if you read the newspapers, um, they say that there are many more bad bugs than compared to other years. Is this true? Do you have more patience for this kind of issue? Well, we may need to them in the summer, either way. Mm. Mm. True, true. Um, Great. Good. Constantinos. So, a 66-year-old female with a lesion in the calf, present for two years. Reports itchiness, but I need to highlight it's a solitary lesion. Solitary lesion. Next. And this is the dermoscopy of the lesion. I think it's quite informative. So that's, my friend, you have said the same in the other cases. It seems not so informative. <laughs> Let me see what are the four choices that we have in here. Pavel, do you know what it is? I hope so. Let's get your fingers ready, guys. <laughs> Solitary lesion. Is this a BCC? Is this an SCC? Is this an melanotic melanoma? Or is this psoriasis? Solitary. Oh, oh. The vast majority got correct. Yes, indeed. The, the main differential here would be psoriasis, but that's why I highlighted solitary so much. Patient had nothing similar anywhere else in the, in the body. There was an enlarging solitary lesion on the lower calf, and uh, we will explain on dermoscopy. Let's see the winners for now. My God, guys, what do you do here? I mean, this is, ooh, Sulin is on fire. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, Sulin. But, and we have the winner for the first time with us here mm-hmm. among the top five. So among the top five. Lancy yeah. is ahead, but yeah. all the others. One, one, uh, yeah, all the others are very points close. ahead. Can you believe it? But a thousand points is one question. So it's very easy to, to, to turn this around. Okay, okay. Konstantinos keeps it exciting. Okay, good. So tell us about the clues. So as we said, solitary lesion on the lower leg of a six-year-old female, we can see the majority of uh, glomerular vessels. So pointing us towards SCCIS, bounds disease. And in addition, we also see the um, the shiny white blotches and strands, which are more common in the non tumors. Could this be a BCC? Yes, it could, because uh, basal cell carcinomas on the lower legs have a peculiar appearance, but we we wouldn't see all these glomerular vessels on a basal cell carcinoma. It, it wouldn't scale. Be Pardon me? And the scale. Yes, there is also some scale yeah. on the upper part. Would this be psoriasis? Yes, a, psori- a, psori- a psoriatic plague would look almost exactly like that, maybe a little bit more hyperkeratotic. However, the solitary is the clue that excludes psoriasis and mm-hmm. leads towards uh, cutaneous screen cell carcinoma inside. Constantinos, when you basically use your manual dermoscope, you switch between polarized and non-polarized in this type of cases, back and forth? Oh, always, always. I always, so when when I examine a patient and I record a, a picture, I always take a clinical, so overview, close up, contact polarized, contact non-polarized, okay. and usually, um, one of the dermatoscopes has uh, the option of par- of a uh, parallel polarization. So I usually take a video going from polarized to non polarized cross polarization. So I take all, all the different stages. Cool. Yeah, to see the scaling much better. I mean, in this case, you would see the scaling perfectly. In exactly. Good. Very good. Very good. People, next case. Wow. What is mm. that? Pavel, what is uh. this? <laughs> this is a six-year-old man uh, who uh, reported a burning sensation uh, on his armpits. And you may read already something from the clinical and, and dermatoscopic presentation. 
We have UV I will show you also another image. We have UV. 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 Yeah. Okay. What's, uh, what's glowing here? That's very interesting. It can I say? Can like... I say? So don't, it's a case look. from space. Yeah. It's a case from space. It looks nuclear. So people, get your fingers ready. That's a very exciting one. Now I want to see what happens to the scoreboard. Are the bluish structures? Ooh, fine, oh. fine. Majority voted for trichobacteriosis, and this is correct. And there's not much philosophy in here, but let's let's check who's the leader now. Whoa, again, that was, we have again, again ET Zach and like RM. But the, the ET, ET went up. But guys, uh, Lenchik didn't didn't win any, any additional score. Yes. So he, he missed the correct answer. Ah. Oh my God. But still not my one. God. But, still but it was not one enough to beat him. The, the others getting closer. The others getting closer. Yeah. The pressure is growing on Lenchik. The pressure is growing. Him or her? Oh, all right, all right. Lenjik sounds that's an interesting name. Maybe good. Tell us, tell us about so here the yellow green peripillar conglomerates are just corinth bacterial colonies uh, that glow under ultraviolet fluorescence uh, dermatoscopy that we uh, described uh, some time ago last year, I think, with, with Marwan uh, Al Nasiri. You may know him from the dermatoscopy group. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what glows exactly. This is some uh, protein, but the the uh, uh, the true source uh, of this glow, the, the the particular compound, has not been identified so far. Interesting. It looks like from a kind of a Star Wars movie. Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So very well done picture, Pavel. I know that you experiment a lot with UV. Uh, yes. This, we're gonna gain a lot more clue. In the near future, I hope that that tomorrow you you will see the large review paper on UV. Great, because Great. I sent the proofs today. Excellent job, my friend. Excellent job. Let's go to the next case, Constantinos. What do you have for us here? So, I'll be tricky. <laughs> but not very much. Not very much. Okay. <laughs> 58-year-old male presents with a lesion on the abdomen, history of one year. It's stable. It doesn't evolve. Look at it clinically. And let's move on the dermoscopy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are two main clues here for the diagnosis. I would urge you to focus on the effect that the pressure has, this is one, and two, on the periphery of the lesion. Let's see our choices. Hey, everybody. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. <laughs> is this a melanoma? Is this a basal cell carcinoma? Is this a dermatofibroma? Or is this a spring cell carcinoma? Very good. Very good. Oh, very nice. Clear. Mm -hmm. 44 correct answers. Lovely. Very good. Very good. 50 days. But. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, <laughs> there we go. oh, my God. It got uh, ahead. Yes, Man. yes. We have got here now a quite interesting situation, people. Everybody about 5,000. One, one correct answer may change a lot now. Yes. yes. Yes, 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 yes. Now, now it gets again very exciting. So tell us. So as we discussed before, the main clue, and this is the reason that I put this image, is that on pressure, dermatofibromas, because there's scarring tissue underneath, you see this white hue of the, of the fibrosis. And additionally, we have this fine brown pigmentation. Some call it delicate network around the lesion that corresponds to the DM. So... The, the only confounding, the only difficult feature here would be this arborizing vessel in the center. However, the rest 
and of course clinical palpation are the ones that can lead us to the diagnosis. Okay, very good, very good. 44 correct answers is quite impressive. It is. So, Pavel. So this is a time for a genital lesion. Uh, you can see the presentation, clinical presentation to the left. Uh, so it's uh, uh, an adult man with a few months history uh, of balanitis uh, with linear fissuring uh, of the polar skin. You can now read the classic dermatoscopy. Uh, and in a while, I'll show you the ultraviolet fluorescence dermatoscopy. Oh. So it went right I, okay. away. <laughs> the ultraviolet so gives it in. That speeds up a little bit. Oh. So this was a fast <laughs> step ahead. Yes, oh. the answer is psoriasis. But oh the God. clinical presentation was lichen sclerosis, definitely. Mm -hmm. Can we, uh, ch let's let's check first who's the winner now. It was a but special pa task. But Pavel, this was a super difficult case, my friend. Yes, this was really difficult. Answers. I was completely sure that it was a back. lichen planus. And then I put my dermatoscope on it. And that was the, the answer. So okay. Lenchik is back. Congratulations. So what are the clues? The first clue is the classical dotted vessels pattern that Konstantinos talked about uh, uh, in the, in the uh, few cases uh, before mine. So this uh, regular uh, uniform dotted vessels uh, with uh, uniform spacing, with uniform in size are very typical for uh, uh, dermatitis and here in particular for psoriasis. So the, the, the answer was already in dermatoscopy, the, the conventional one. But here we have a second clue with ultraviolet. Can you see it, Konstantinos? Uh, no. <laughs> you will not see it because you don't know what to look for. And this is the pink color. Can you okay. see pink? Yes. Yes. And psoriasis, or some of the psoriatic lesions, are pink. If you have a solitary lesion that is pink, it cannot be a uh, squamous cell carcinoma. It's psoriasis for sure. I have never seen any other uh, dermatosis with this uh, pink glow. Hmm. Very interesting. I didn't know about it. Is it published? We're running a study on that and we oh. try to understand which uh, lesions glow and which not. Nice. Very interesting, but my friend... So this was very did, difficult. You did Lenchik a great favor. He's back. Yeah, but, but this is a challenge. Come on. <laughs> uh -huh. You need to risk even if you don't know. True. True. Absolutely. Okay, so this is the typical horror patient that comes into the high-risk clinics. A typical mold syndrome, history of uh, two melanomas, actually, and multiple decisions multiple atypical nevi, and the lesion that we're going to focus on is on the right of the scar, the pink lesion. So, Moa, if you can move your mouse. So, no, sorry, sorry, no, that's okay. That's okay, that's, no worry. Did I go back? That's okay, that's okay. Uh, so this is the dermoscopy of the lesion that we were discussing. It's a new lesion discovered on uh, total body photography. Total body photography is another big chapter that uh, we need to analyze. If you can zoom in on the lesion so that people can see it a little bit more, more clearly. So there is some scaling. However, if you notice the surrounding skin, there is cirrhosis as well. So most likely it could be attributed to the cirrhosis. What I would like you to focus on is the vascular pattern, okay? Or on the entirety of the lesion. And let's see our options. Is this a basal cell carcinoma, a squamous cell carcinoma, an amyl not melanoma, or eczema? Excellent. Excellent. 
38 correct answers, everybody. 38 correct answers. Oh. People did great. Lancic is still on the lead. E.T. is very close. And so is Aran. The winner is rising. So is Dermalex. So most people got it correctly. <clears throat> and why is it that? So one, it's a very high risk patient. We, he has already had two melanomas. We expect him to develop another one. And on this lesion, as we discussed, yes, there is some scale that could lead us to, towards a keratinocytic tumor. However, we see the cirrhosis around it. So most likely the, the patient has a dry skin. The most important clue here is the um, polymorphous vessels. We have dotted vessels, we have comma vessels, we have also short fine linear vessels. This was a melanoma, melanoma uh, 0.3 millimeters in breast thickness. New lesion developed within six six months of follow up. The next case is a uh, young woman who presented with gradually enlarging uh, facial nodule that was brown, and uh, the growth was not so rapid because it took her two years. To, to to present uh, uh, the lesion to the dermatologist. Oh, mm -hmm. two years. Two years. years. Mm -hmm. But look at that. Okay. Are you worried or not? So uh, people, is, is the question: Would I biopsy or not? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's vote. Oh. So the left one is uh, non-polarized, non-polarized, and you have and, got the polarized. and the right one is polarized. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good, Pavel. Two pictures in this case. Probably there is some clue hidden in it. People have a close look, and we start the quiz. And the question is, what's your diagnosis? Is it malignant melanocytic, malignant keratinocytic, or benign melanocytic or keratinocytic? Ah, interesting. You got more time for this one. Yeah, they had 20 seconds because there were two uh, images. <laughs> double the time. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. And okay. most people okay. voted for benign keratinocytic. Hmm. Interesting. Separate keratosis then. I thought it was sub K, yeah. Ah, uh, difficult, difficult. Okay. It was guys. a tricky one. Who, who this was is correct? Gonna, this Let's is check the, the winners. Wow, mm. people, we have two newcomers, Lucky yeah. and Dularbo. So, and and we have got the, the yeah, winner. The winner is, is, is uh, running towards uh, first place. <laughs> oh, yes. No, no, we are, we, this is quite exciting. This is not much much space between them. Mm. Good. So tell us, Pavel, oh, you have got... Yeah, it, it, was, it was really difficult, yeah. But we need to keep in mind that it, it's a nodule. So uh, we don't need uh, chaos here. We just need to, to check for the clues. And it's also a facial lesion. So uh, anyway, uh, two exceptions. Uh, we have a brown structureless uh, area with number one. And we have some pigmented clues. And pigmented clues are always the strongest. So if you close your eyes and listen to me, uh, uh, how I describe it, you already know what it is. So we have gray dots and clots, and some of them are concentric, so a dot within a clot. We also have brown dots somewhere uh, within this uh, lesion. We have white polarizing uh, specific lines, and we have linear serpentine vessels. So this description, if you don't look at this lesion, fits to basal cell carcinoma, which is which it was. If it was a melanoma, uh, it would not take two years for it to 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 grow that large and uh, without any consequences. Yeah, and there is this erosion also, number seven, that I skipped. That's yeah, here. Horrible. Thanks. Why did the lady uh, wait two years? Did she I say? don't know. I, I, I have the slightest idea. Mm. <laughs> okay. Good, good. Very well done, Pavel. Very well done explaining the clues. Let's go to our next case. All right. Mm -hmm.
Konstantinos. Okay, this is a tricky one. A uh, 73 year old male presents for lesion on the nose, enlarging for the past three years. Konstantinos, this clinical image is very well done. How did you take it? Uh, with my iPhone. It's really well. I, I, I'm i lately using the portrait mode in order to isolate lesions, and it helps very much. Very good to know. I mean, it looks really nice. So if you could enlarge the, the image a little bit. Hmm. Okay. So now, okay. why okay. I want you to... Don't I want say to... anything. Don't say Pardon me? Don't tell us any clues. People should just take time to have a look. Um, Maybe give very little hints. Yeah, but, you know, some clues help. Okay. Describe I will not it for give... yourself and then <laughs> think what it fits. I will <laughs> not... look at the image. I will not give any clues. Okay. Let's okay. Vote. Let's vote. Let's vote. Let's vote. Let's vote. Because the picture says more than 1,000 boards, guys. Come on. <laughs> What do you diagnose? Is the basal cell carcinoma? Is the lentigo maligna? Is the lentigo maligna melanoma or a severe keratosis? My God! I should have gone with the clues. You didn't allow me. <laughs> but but come on, thirty-seven go for lentigo maligna. Yeah, yes. because this was very very tricky for the angulated lines. Exactly, mm. are not as specific as we think. I think. Exactly, exactly, Pavel. They're not as specific as, as we think. And there's also one clue that we'll discuss afterwards. But let's see the, the leaderboard. My God, what the, I think you destroyed the scoreboard. Yeah, I I, I did a distraction. Oh, ah. Not really, but we have uh, a newcomer. But newcomer. Welcome, welcome, give me B. Give me welcome. B. Wow. And welcome, give me B. And I think uh, the others actually all went probably for the wrong answer because nothing changed here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, with, with seven Incredible. correct answers, this is not a surprise. Incredible. Give me B. Welcome. You deserved it. So tell Absolutely. us the clues. So the most important clue here is one. So pigmented basal cell carcinoma has one phenomenal uh, thing. It's the only cancer, the only lesion, actually, that has features with 100% sensitivity and specificity. And those are the concentric stru structures that Pavel was describing before. And you can see that there are several of those, especially in the center. Moha, if you can move your mouse a little bit to the left. Here? Not, not that much to the left, in the center. So go exactly in the center and a little bit more down. Down, down, down. And to the right. Well, that's one, that's one. And then there's two, and then another one next to it. So these are the clues that led to the diagnosis. And of course, this was a superficial and nodular basal cell carcinoma. You can see the blue-gray ovoid nest on the top, obstructing the hair follicles. Konstantinos, how did you take this picture? This is the damn light photo pro? Like what, what photo, lens? Yeah, it's, it's the photo X, it's the photo X. All my pictures photo are with yeah. incredible picture, man. Uh, Konstantinos, yeah. I, I'm thinking about uh, why shouldn't we compare what different experts uh, look at first assessing the the uh, the lesion uh, finding a rationale for the diagnosis because mm. my, my thinking was it is a flat pigmented lesion with ulceration and flat pigmented lesion with ulceration is uh, is a bcc interesting so i i I'm, i i'm all i'm more of pattern recognition and if it doesn't fit, I look for specific clues here. I mean, for me, it, 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 they are the concentric structures. So it's like, since you have 100% sensitivity and specificity, it's like, it's it's that. There's nothing more. Mm -hmm. But it's a very interesting idea, about it. Yes, absolutely. And again, the patient was uh, mm -hmm. waiting three years to show up, right? Yes. Well, I mean, he also had another 10 BCCs on his face. So I wasn't very surprised. Wow. <laughs> Good. Very so, peculiar. Yeah. Okay. Pavel, in uh, this clinical so this picture... is an abdomen of a young man who came for a routine skin check. And you can see a distant star of this show. Uh, this tiny spot. 
What is it? Is that a dermoscopy? No history. No history whatsoever. Do we have dermoscopy? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> no. Yes. It's it's not uh, so in focus because it's highly magnified. The lesion is, I think, two or three millimeters wide. Mm. Mm. To be honest, I cannot see very clearly. Do we have a squirrel holding uh, hair? <laughs> Okay, guys, this one is basically a matter of luck. Let's see how you <laughs> no, get No, no way. And I will tell you why not. Okay, okay. So, people, focus and be creative, let's say. <laughs> Look at the pigment clues. This one is difficult, really tricky. Is it invasive melanoma? Is it melanoma in situ? Is it solar lentigo or traumatized dermal nevus? Wonderful. Well, I'm inside too. And with 20 correct answers, and majority oh, voted oh, for okay. traumatized dermal nevus. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's first see what happened to our scoreboard. Uh, I think it go. destroyed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. It destroyed wow. the, the top scores. Yes. Now but we, we have, have got the, low, low mm -hmm. re, uh, low in among us for the first yes. time. Lucky is back. Lucky is back. Lanting is leading still. Gimme B, Gimme B lost it, but uh, still among the top five. Yeah. Let's see now the clues. What are the clues over here? So there are only three clues here. So what we see here is brown structureless area. So they can be it, it can be present in solar lentigo, in dermal nevus, and in melanoma. So it's not a clue. But we have also dotted vessels. This is number two. You can see they are quite arranged in lines. And they are uniform, and they should not be expected in solar lentigo and in dermal nevus, because in dermal nevus, they are either uh, um, centered or looped. So we only have melanoma left. How old was the patient, Pavel? 20 years old. No way. Wow. Yeah. And he, he was scared about the new lesion. No, it was an accidental finding. Uh, that I, I really wonder because and, and so the third clue is polarizing specific white lines and it saved many lives I think yes. uh, because I have some small amelanotic melanomas with only white lines present so white lines uh, which is a further strong clue to malignancy plus dotted vessels means it's a melanoma in situ mm -hmm. in invasive melanoma you'd have linear vessels looped uh, serpentine but here they are uniform dotted very interesting 20 years old especially because he has nothing else on his yeah so nothing but even one spot yeah <laughs> very good cut Pavel. next one so 58 year old male patient with a history of metastatic cancer known history of metastatic cancer, presents with three new enlarging lesions on the neck. Cool. Okay. Let's go to the dermoscopy. Mm -hmm. I want you to look closely at the dermoscopy and the colors that you can see here. Okay, everybody. Eyes yeah. white, short. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes wide open. Eyes wide open. <laughs> Let's go. Blink and blink. Is this metastatic melanoma, metastatic thyroid cancer, metastatic colon cancer, or metastatic squamous cell carcinoma? Color, color. Excellent, excellent. Wonderful. Bravo. Let's. Let's see at the leaderboard. Lucky is number Lucky one. Lead. And Lovery is on fire. <laughs> Everyone is so close. Like, it can change at any time. This is wonderful. Yes. yes, yes, this is wonderful. People, stay focused. You are all still having the chance to win. So let's go back to the case. Konstantinos, tell us. 
So, of course, this is metastatic cancer. It will be chaos. It will be peculiar. It will be weird. It will be ugly. But the only clue here, and the reason that I ask you to, to pay attention, is the white color. The white color means that it maintains some form of differentiation. It, it still produces keratin. We see this amorphous white structure, which is very indicative for squamous cell carcinoma. Excellent, people. Bravo, bravo. And again, incredible picture. I think that yeah. it's not difficult to take a dermoscopic picture from this uh, kind of lesions, but it's very well done. Very well. Thank you, thank you. Pavel. Yes, next case is a young woman who presented with a, a pink lesion uh, that developed three months uh, before the visit that was uh, massively bleeding and was very tender. Can we see the dermatoscopy? Hmm. Yeah, you can see it's uh, pinkish mostly, maybe some yellow here. But look at the vessels in pink uh, tumors, vessels are uh, very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, you have a great time. Time. And I will give you four diagnoses. Hmm. Basal cell carcinoma, pyogenic granuloma, traumatized uh, sebaceous nevus, and spiradenoma. Excellent. Yeah, most people voted for pyogenic granuloma, which statistically would be true if not for the dermatoscopy, because linear lubed vessels are not typical for pyogenic granuloma. So let's see the mess, guys. The the, <laughs> the way the way you selected your cases, this game will remain exciting until the very very last one. So. It will reshuffle all the time. Lansing yeah. is back. Lansing is back and the lead. 100 points ahead, lucky. Mm -hmm. Bravo, bravo. ET is back. Bravo. But and we have a new player, Derminator. Derminator is with us. Great. Tell us the clues. So the clues are first, linear uh, complex looped vessels that are uh, quite uh, characteristic for uh, for poromas, but for or uh, for, for uh, uh, all uh, tumors developing within the from the uh, sweat glands. So uh, here we need to apply a inverse approach and and uh, rule out the the diagnosis that do not match to this presentation. Uh, we also have pink stroma, pink orangish, and it's said to be more typical for spiradenomas. And we have uh, thick linear branching vessels, but they are out of focus, so we can rule out uh, uh, basal cell carcinoma. We have no red clots that are typical for pyogenic granulomas, uh, no BCC features, and there is no trace of sebaceous nevus. Very good, very good, Pavel. Okay, okay. This, is, this is an easy one. 23 year old male, 23 year old male presented with a new and enlarged lesion in the abdomen. And this is the dermoscopy. I think that people most already know, so be fast. There are two components to this lesion, as you can see. Let's see the options. Hmm. Is this a lupus? Is this, this a lymphadenoma? Be BCC or something else? Yeah, I mean, we need to soften before we, we reach to the end. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. I love it. Six, I don't think well, that's a record. Yeah. It was an easy one. I don't think that we need to explain a lot, but let's see the leaderboard. This is the important thing. Ooh, ooh, lucky. Lucky. Hmm. Lucky, the head. Lucky. Lucky. The top five remains unchanged. I mean, Terminator stays in. Yeah. Yes. Bravo. Excellent. 
two, two components upwards the lymphatic the yellowish uh, serous uh, exudate da downwards the angioma lymphangioma easy straight send the patient home let's move to the next uh, question Uh, can you give me the description back, Moha, please? Yes. So you can see it's a lesion located on the flank. It's pigmented. And it was detected in total body photography. Mm -hmm. So it was already a followed-up patient because of the multiple uh, nevi. Mm -hmm. And you can see non-polarized image to the left and polarized to the right so that you can compare them and spot the differences. Okay, people, have a close look. There is a lot of clue hidden. So it changed. Is it a compound nevus? Is it a de novo melanoma? Is it a combined nevus? Or is it a basal cell carcinoma? Yeah, majority Wonderful. voted for de novo melanoma. And the answer is combined nevus. But 17 people found it. I'm still impressed. Yeah, yeah. This was very difficult. Yeah. We had an episode on combined nevus uh, the previous uh, week on uh, Dermoscopy Happy Hour. I think that's where they got it from. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting. Only 17 correct answers, and this will have an impact on our scoreboards. Well, nobody found it correctly, but wow. <laughs> nothing changed. <laughs> no change. No change. No change. But maybe the winner is somewhere below the fifth place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. But, uh, okay, uh, let, let's talk about the clues. Yeah. So, first of all, what you can see is that the the lesion has a concentric architecture. So we have a darker center and lighter periphery, which is uh, generally clue to benign nature. But some melanomas also develop within uh, the, the nevi. Uh, the second clue is the blue color in the center. Uh, you can see it. So blue means uh, the mel melanin is located deep in the dermis. So we have a deeper component in the center. Uh, and three is the clots, brown clots at the center. I will give you the diagnosis because this was a, 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 a compound nevus, which was located on the top of deep penetrating blue nevus. So the blue component is a blue nevus and the top with the clots, uh, corresponds to, to the um, uh, compound nevus. So number four is uh, peripheral dots. And this is the junctional component that is growing at the periphery. Number five is uh, depigmented lines reticular. And this is a weak clue to malignancy. It may uh, develop uh, in benign nevi, but it's twice uh, uh, more common in melanoma. Uh, number six is uh, linear lubed vessels. That is a clue to uh, dermal component of this nevus. And number seven, uh, white lines, uh, uh, polarizing specific, which were uh, uh, the um, um, key uh, structure that led uh, to the decision of removing this lesion. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, Pavel. You know what I did? I was also having a, a look at this lesion. And uh, I took first the uh, the image that was non-polarized. Yeah. And it said it's benign. <laughs> and it said it's benign and melanocytic, okay? I, I was not so sure. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, when I took the other picture, which is the polarized one, Look, we are ending uh, up in a kind of risk. A, yeah, but but the, the 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 algorithm is not sure about it. It's not a very but, very clear cut answer. We are somewhere in the middle, okay? But so this is the power of polarization. 
Yes. Yeah, but yeah. This good, like this lesion needs yeah. to be examined, guys. Like in, in all cases, it needs to be examined under a microscope. However, okay. yes, there are the clues for combined needles, as Pavel was describing. However, we will not play guards. We 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 shouldn't, and we try not to. This yeah. is a lesion exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With this white yeah. lines, I would never leave it. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's it means it it's uh, uh, modifies the architecture below the dermal epidermal junction. So there exactly. are some the fibrotic processes. Exactly. People, um, in one of the uh, previous sessions on AI, we highlighted how important it is to always take polarized image because definitely this is a good good case that shows the performance of our algorithm would drop actually with a picture that is non-polarized because the, definitely the correct uh, the correct picture for an analysis with AI is this one. And then you get also proper answer, I mean, the proper uh, assessment from it. But um, that is why we believe it's not just about providing algorithm to, to everybody. It's about really teaching how to use it. I mean, the picture must be relevant. And the relevant picture is definitely uh, a cross-polarized picture, thermoscopic picture. Good. Let's go to the next case. Genital. Is this the last one? No, it's the, the previous to last one. So two questions remaining? I, I think, think so. Was yes. this your last case, Pavel? No, you have one more. I think, no. I think it's my last, my last case. Yeah, okay. okay then. So guys, be focused and very fast. Because now it's the time to win it. Yes. So 67 year old male presents a new and enlarging lesion. The genitals been there for maybe six, eight months. And we have the demoscopy. Can you zoom in on it? Mm -hmm. So several clues to the diagnosis, several clues to the diagnosis. I will not say many things. And let and also there are the last questions. People need to be on their on their feet. Everybody, so, focus, focus. This is probably your chance to end up in the top five. Come on, everybody. To end yes, up in Argentina. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Think about so, steak what? and red wine. Good. Is this uh, normal? Is this benign? No. Is this squamous cell carcinoma or is this something else? Divided. Correct mm -hmm. answers. Bravo. But divided. Divided among melanoma, which I mean, I expected. Yet the clues are pretty evident and we'll discuss them in, in the course. Let's see. Oh my God. Whoa, what happened here? No, no, no. So it is on the lead. Hmm. It is on the lead. And Lensic, Lensic lost it to number four. Oh my God. But everybody is so close. Yeah. And so the last question will, will we'll really decide. decide. Everything, oh yeah. God. Ooh, la, 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 la. Bravo, bravo. Okay, bravo. let's see. Constantinos. So next, uh, you have to, ah, yeah, to explain. Two main, clues. Two main clues for squamous cell carcinoma. On the upper part of the image, we can see the glomerular vessels that, as we have extensively uh, discussed, are a clue to uh, squamous cell carcinoma. And at the lower part, we have these very specific dots in a line. We never see these, this structure and this form in any other lesion. It's very indicative for pigmented squamous cell carcinoma. And then the answer is, of course, this was invasive because, as you can see, we also have shiny white lines. So, as Pavel was saying, stromal alteration, fibrosis underneath the DEJ, and also the ulceration that leads us towards the invasive uh, part. But it's squamous cell because we have the, the glomerular vessels and the dots in a line. Bravo. Bravo. So it was a uh, kind of a melanoplasia of Queira. <laughs> yeah, yeah, melanoplasia of Queira. In case <laughs> melanoplasia of Queira. <laughs> okay, everybody, the final yeah. case. The final case. And so, again, it doesn't look easy to me. Feel your armchairs uh, uh, comfortable. 
now this is the last uh, last case. Uh, pigmented lesion on the back of an elderly woman. Accidental finding again. So let's see the dermatoscopy. Ah, nice. This is a magnified image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at the clues. And please decide which answer fits best. Okay, everybody, focus. Last chance. Last chance. To Last chance to go it. to Argentina. We should have some dramatic music. Ooh. Yeah, we need some dramatic music. Yeah. Malignant melanocytic, malignant keratinocytic, benign melanocytic, or benign keratinocytic. Oh, yes. Oh, Excellent. Cool. Bravo, yes. guys. Very good. But if good. we show now the result, oh. we'll see the final winner. Let's wait. Let's. Oh, my God. Yeah, the emotions. We're going to take a picture of this one because we're going yeah. to invite everybody in. Just, Let me just one see. question. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. First, first the clue. First the clue. First the clue, okay? Fine, <laughs> fine. Okay, so why was it a uh, uh, malignant cardiocyting, meaning uh, BCC? So what you can see here uh, with number one as uh, angulated lines. And as we previously discussed, this, these are not specific for uh, melanoma. They can be present in a range of, of uh, diagnosis, including um, um, other uh, malignant, uh, pigmented malignant tumors and uh, pigmented uh, benign lesions. And here uh, they uh, develop on a, a massively sun damaged skin in a BCC. Uh, number two uh, is uh, radial lines converging to a common base located at the periphery. And this clue is shared uh, by melanoma, by growing uh, nevi, uh, especially Spitz neva, nevus, uh, and melanoma. Uh, but we also have uh, radial lines converging to a let's say, common structures and growing uh, inwards, in an inward direction. And this is very typical only for BCCs. In melanomas and in nevi, they always grow outwards. So they spread to the periphery, never to the inside. And number four, uh, brown dots. That is a classical uh, BCC uh, clue. And number five, uh, small uh, polarizing specific white uh, areas that are very common in superficial uh, BCCs, especially the, the, the non-pigmented ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And number six, I wonder what was the number six? Number six was the vessels. I think they are not so well uh, visible, but they are linear, short, uh, linear uh, uh, serpentine vessels that further support the diagnosis of superficial BCC. Mm -hmm. Before we see the winner, one question to you both. What topic is fascinating you the most currently in dermoscopy or in... Oh, there are multiple. <laughs> <laughs> so ultraviolet, uh, uh, reflectance dermatoscopy, uh, polarization, so uh, we investigate many topics and mm -hmm. all are very, very interesting. True, true. Because it's it's defining a new world. <laughs> yeah. No, dermoscopy is in permanent evolution and that's what makes it so exciting, actually. This is it. And you, Konstantinos? Well, a plurality of things, but my ever-ending passion is the correlation. So correlation of clinical, dermoscopic, confocal and histological uh, features to biology. So this is my main uh, focus and what I really love. Great. So I think we are ready now to present the winner. Ta -da, ta -da. Ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> the podium, everybody, number three. Lovely. Bravo, oh. lovely. Prepare yourself to join us. I want to meet you. Itchy. Itchy. And, and 
Who is it? Lucky. 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 Oh, wow. Lucky. I think Lucky was only twice or three times on the number one, but now uh, Lucky won. Wow. So wow. Uh, may I ask, runner. May I ask all three to uncover themselves? Then they can join us. Can you maybe enter the chat, everybody? Would be great to have you among us, maybe activating your microphone, even your video, if you can join us. Maybe our colleagues uh, can help us to, to get you among us. Welcome and congratulations to winning this year's Mobile Bowl, everybody. You made it. You made it. So please chat with us and um, come and join us. Uncover yourself. So, so, Constantinos and Pavel, thank you so much for preparing these cases. I enjoyed it. Our winners should please raise their hands so that we can recognize them. Raise your hands, dear winners. Get in touch with us. We will try to get uh, unmute your microphones and maybe also videos so that. Oh, we have Fatih. Lovely. Anita. Hello. Hello. All right. Hello. So who, who is speaking? Uh, Lovre is speaking. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from Croatia, from Zadar. I'm a specialist in dermatology. And I knew, knew all of you guys. I uh, watch you every time. So it's a pleasure to meet you. It's hey. great to meet you, Robert. Would you mind opening your uh, camera? And also, seek them. I know seek them. <laughs> yeah, many camera Bravo. And we have got Anita with us. Are you Hello, lucky Ali. or are you it... so the nicknames? We have yeah. to know who is who had which nickname. It. Hello, I am Anita from uh, Hungary. Hello, nice to, meet you. <laughs> nice to have you among us. Is the name of my favorite Hungarian music band. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Thank you very much for participating in and, and to be honest, you have been for a long, long time among the top five. So you have done a good job. Bravo, it was really exciting. Thanks for the cases. Anita, which case was most difficult for you? Did you, do you remember? Mm, maybe the last one, it was very tricky. <laughs> The first one. The first one. The first one. Yes. <laughs> yes. The first one was. And we have got now lucky, <laughs> lucky with us. Where are you from? Hello, Hello Chikdem. How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you for the wonderful session again. Um, I was very bad at the beginning, but uh, towards the end, uh, I, I was again um, succeeding. <laughs> Thank you very well much. Done. Where are you Congratulations. From? We learned a lot. Thank you very much. Where are you from? I'm from Turkey, Istanbul. Welcome, hey. welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm. People, uh, you all did a great job. It was um, uh, quite uh, exciting. And I would say the race was very close. I mean, uh, toward the end. So we can say it was just a matter of time and correct answer, but more probably more time than correct answer. And uh, you did well. I would say we invite uh, Chikdem, you are the first person to select among the prizes that we have. We have got the di digital training and also the ticket to the World Congress. It's Which the one do you prefer? The ticket for the World Congress, the ticket... not the ticket of the plane. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's, the, it's the badge, basically. You will get the badge to yes. Buenos Aires World Congress. Do you want that or, or the digital training? Which one do you uh, prefer? I hope to attend the Congress, uh, but I hope. <laughs> So you 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 go for the you go for the badge already, and now that we know you are the Moscow talent, we will probably be able to create even more incentive. It's important for us as, as a photo finder to discover exactly those among of you who are good in in pattern recognition, in fast pattern recognition. We have got a kind of a rating uh, app among uh, I mean in photo finder that helps us to uh, to do rating of images when we do AI trainings. So we are very, very happy to meet talents. And you three, you made it. That is why we are happy to meet you. So uh, Anita, would you, uh, Anita and Lovri will get uh, the um, digital training ticket, right? Also, also the choice. You also have the choice, Anita and Lovri. What would you go for? 
I think Anita was second, right? So yes. Anita uh, should choose. Yeah, actually, I'm at home with two babies, so probably I would go for the digital training. Which Makes is sense. also very entertaining, Emilio and very Jackie. Good. You will yeah. never get bored. That's what we can get. <laughs> yeah, Ten very sessions. good. No, oh, you will like. Thank you very much. Thanks. You're most welcome. And Lovre, what about you? Uh, can I get a virtual card for the Congress? Sure. Yes. Sure. sure. Thank you. And, and you, you will be most welcome, hopefully, with us to celebrate a big dermoscopy party in Buenos Aires. This is what we can definitely guarantee. <laughs> Thanks. I'll be watching from my home. <laughs> and and please, uh, three of you, write us a mail or contact us. Yes, leave your that, information yeah. in the chat for us, please. Yes, so we can send you the access and, uh, and, and the, the ticket, the yeah. ticket and also the digital training uh, codes. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody, for your participation, for the time, and to our two great speakers for the preparation of the rather difficult cases, I would say. Uh, you, you were not merciful, oh. let's say. <laughs> Come on, they were gradients. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did great job, as usual. Um, I, I believe uh, the mole bowl uh, being very close to the American Super Bowl uh, is, is now a tradition. And uh, I mean, uh, Constantinos, you lived so many years in the US. What is this uh, Super Bowl fever? I mean, we don't have something like this in Europe, like this kind of annual event that basically is getting the entire country frozen. Everybody's in fever of Super Bowl. What kind of, I mean, passion is this in the US? What do you mean? We have the Champions League final. Which, but is, I mean, is it similar? Is it really? Is it like the Champions League final of football? Is it the same? Oh, it, yes, absolutely. It's the Champions League final of football. Or actually, okay. you know what? That, what is to the, to to the Americans? I think it's more to the European to the World Cup final. But it, it happened. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's what I would say. The World Cup is so like every four years the yeah. super sport event in Europe, I would say. But the American have every year the Super Bowl. And it's so exciting because it's not always the same win, uh, the same team winning. It's like yeah. shuffled. I mean, it's very, very interesting. It's totally shuffled. And I mean, even in the NBA, so they have set their system in a way to democratize within uh, brackets, the whole system with a salary cap and all these things. And this adds interest to, to the game. Imagine, I don't know, Panathinaikos from Athens being at the at the Champions League final after five years, which would be amazing, but it cannot happen because of the difference in the salaries. Whereas in the, in the US, they have managed it in a very nice way, I think. I agree. I fully agree. This is what we should learn from them, actually. No, it's 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 great. Um, again, um, people, I hope that we can meet each other in uh, one of the next shows. In the live events, we have uh, EADO upcoming. We have got the AAD, the American Academy upcoming. We have got, uh, in Germany anyway, several yeah, events yeah, that are yeah. upcoming Lots dermatology. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to and meeting the next, you. And the next online academy, it's not yet scheduled. Um, it's not yet online, but it will be in the second half of March. Oh. And it will be an amazing one. For you. It's going to be a surprising one, yes. guys. So uh, yes. stay tuned. We will share with you the information on the next online academy, which we decided to actually uh, launch today. And um, stay with us. We really look forward to having you with us Friday evenings, Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, to our two speakers, the last words are yours. The stage is yours. The stage is yours. <laughs> My, mine. Well, I mean, <laughs> so it's always so wonderful to be among friends because this is in essence what Demoscopy does, as it creates a community that eventually becomes friends and eventually becomes a family. This is the magic of Demoscopy, and this is what the IDS has, has achieved in in such a simple way. It never tried to do it, but I think it's the passion that connects people, and it's also the fun that we get while doing what we do. And this is what I love. This is what I love about the Photo Finder Academy. And this is why I'm always here with all my love and passion to teach and to be taught at the same time. Okay. Thank you, Constantinos. Thank you very much for your time, for the time you dedicated. Pavel. I, I think that what uh, people enjoy most in dermatoscopy, uh, a part of the so society, let's say, is being correct. 
uh, dermatoscopy uh, lets you be collect, correct. Because once you know the rules, you feel better uh, when you, uh, you diagnose the patient uh, correctly. So uh, it's, uh, I think it, it, it's what drives our passion. Because when we, we are wrong, then we learn and we are better doctors. And I think you never stop to learn because as we discover today, probably every week you will discover another lesion yes. that surprises you. So, so, so this is a never ending game. Yeah. And you're always winning and you always have a chance to win. <laughs> true, true. That's a nice statement for the end of our academy. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so um, much. It was really great. And hope to see you next year again before the Super Bowl and another version of the Mold Bowl at Photofinder Academy. <laughs> have a nice awesome. weekend, everybody. <laughs> it was amazing. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for staying with Thank us. You bye, very bye. Much. bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Kisses to the world. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>